for this uh, particular session, we will take metabolic and endocrine lesions of skeleton and their radiological findings. How do you classify metabolic bone disorders? Say, let us take vitamins. Vitamins A, C, D will have that effect on the skeleton. Similarly, minerals, calcium, phosphorus, aluminum, enzymes, and miscellaneous toxic substances like, uh, say, fluorine, aluminum, metals, all these have some effect on the skeleton. This particular three-year-old child not thriving well. That's the history from the parent. So what are the radiological findings that you see? Both knees are taken. Marked cupping of the metaphysis. That is due to hypertrophy of the osteoid in the physis as though it is compensating for the lack of mineral, namely calcium, that hypertrophies and you get cupping. Cupping is more marked in the bones where the child is active, say wrists and knees. And then also look at the epiphyseal centers. There is no cortical bone. You can't try an outline, cortical outline. So that is typical of rickets. Etiology, commonly in this particular country, in our country, it is vitamin D deficiency, but there are several etiologies, all right. Vitamin D deficiency both in the diet because of the lack of intake, sometimes lack of sunshine, malabsorption, lack of exposure to sun, non-utilization in the liver or kidney, deficient enzyme like uh, phosphatase, excessive excretion and miscellaneous. That's why we said lack of intake, lack of exposure to sun, lack of absorption in the gut, lack of stage 1 metabolism that occurs in the liver and the final metabolism that occurs in the kidney and of course lack of enzyme, hypophosphatasia for example, simulates rickets. Radiological findings as I have told you earlier, ground glass appearance that is you can't differentiate between the cortex and spongiosa that easily. Normally the cortex should have a nice dense line and the spongiosa is relatively loosened but here some sort of a ground glass appearance, metaphyseal cupping, classical, and paint brush appearance, that is, the columns of cartilage, some of them attempt to calcify, that's why they are white. And then the columns of cartilage, which are not calcified, are loosened, that's why it gives the paint brush type of appearance, osteoid seams are so-called loser zones, absence of laminar dura, if you take the mandible for teeth, delayed growth and maturation. And of course, periosteal reaction. What is periosteal? Only in certain cases it occurs. That's because of stress or the host tries to support the bone. That's why minimal periosteal reaction you can get. Or there may be micro fractures where reparative process goes on and that's why you get periosteal reaction. Rachitic rosary, that is, prominent growth plate along costochondral junctions. Excessive non mineralized osteoid that cone view shows you the, not only the cupping but the clinically that cupping, as I said already, there is excessive osteoid non mineralized and that produces a bleeding appearance clinically. In the skull, what they call cranio tabis that is softening of the particularly frontal bone. Occasionally it can occur in parietal bones also. Rickets in renal tubular acidosis. Look at the deformities that there is and some changes in the wrist also. Look at the proximal end of the radius. Metaphyseal cupping is there. Crumbling of growing ends of bones. This is renal rickets. Why is it renal rickets? Both tubular and glomerular defects can also occur. And the primary cause for this rickets is renal abnormality. Osteosclerosis is predominant in renal rickets as opposed to dietary rickets and metaphyseal cupping etc are common. Rickets associated with other than nutritional deficiency, what are the medications such as anti epileptic drugs. In old days they used to give phenytoin and barbiturates plenty. Radiation, localized radiation can be used to localize rickets, not generalized rickets. Copper deficiency in the so called Menke's kinky hair syndrome. Aluminum excess, 
beyond dialysis patients and fibrous dysplasia, neurofibromatosis, Fanconi syndrome, congenital are acquired, familial, X-linked, hypophosphatemic, vitamin D resistant rickets, benign and malignant mesenchymal and soft tissue and bone tumors. There is some sort of a humoral mechanism that produces rickets. Osteopetrosis, malriastosis, Wilson's disease, where there is cytoplasm excess. Familial hypophosphatemic vitamin D resistant rickets. This is another dominant familial sex linked transmission. Radiologically, people are short, broad tubular bones, resembles achondroplasia, oscules at wrist, sclerosis of bone, calvarial hyperostosis. And fluorosis. Fluorosis is uh, rampant in certain endemic areas. And if you look into the children who have lived there, born there, and brought up there, you find rachitic changes in these children. Apart from fluorosis, namely density of the bones, marked trabeculae, and paraarticular ossifications. In osteopetrosis, also, renal tubular acidosis type rachitic changes you can get besides marble bone disorder. 10 year old boy with the genu valgus. What is the major finding? Genu valgus is there. The metaphyseal cupping or the widening of the physis is a much more than usual, particularly on the medial ends of the tibia. And there are some growth lines. If you look carefully, there is articular ends of the tibia and femur are irregular, fuzzy type. This is Wilson's disease. Deficiency of cerebellum and copper excess. Skeletal abnormalities include subchondral cysts, chondrocalcinosis, osteochondritis desiccans, chondromalacia patella, Schwerman type of spine with the small snouts, premature degenerative joint disease, osteoporosis, and also osteomalacia and children rickets, plus hepatolenticular degeneration. In uh, MRI of the brain, you may see several changes, widening of the sulci and uh, hydrocephalus, calcifications, etc. In the cone view of the petala, you see the fringing of articular margins on the articular side and condomalacia of the petala. This is due to, as I said earlier, cellulopasm enzyme is deficient, copper is excess, deposition of copper in liver, cartilage in this case, bone and also in the brain, particularly in the extra system. This is a 37 year old woman with weakness and difficulty in walking and if you see look at the pelvis, mark deformity and loser's zones, the arrows point out at the terminal shafts and the middle aspects due to loser's zones and deformity of the pelvic bones due to osteomalacia obviously. Adults, we call it osteomalacia and then children, we call it rickets. Again, the same findings that you find in rickets, namely generalized lucency, occasionally increased density due to osteoid excess, ground glass appearance of bones, osteoid seams or loser zones and deformities due to osteomalacic soft bones. Lack of differential of cortex and spongiosa, endosteal and periosteal new bone formation also we may get, paraarticular calcifications, fractures, loser zones and secondary hyperparathyroidism eventually. An undernourished infant with swellings of both knees, it is an infant less than one year, look at the epiphysis, epiphyseal rings because of the osteoporosis and of course subperiosteal hematoma with calcification and ossifications, classical of scurvy. Vitamin C is required for synthesis of Supportive tissues of mesenchymal origins like osteoid in bone, chondroid in cartilage, dentin in teeth, collagen in capillary walls. Scurvy is vitamin C deficiency as you know already. And radiological findings, soft tissue swellings because of the hemorrhage and sometimes subperiosteal hematomata, calcification of subperiosteal hematoma and cortical thinning, Frankel's zone, this is the zone of provisional calcification, that's why it is dense. Loosened band proximal to this is curvy line or Trummerfeld zone, crumbling zone. These are classical features of scurvy.
to continue, Pelkin spur, cortical metaphyseal spur, metaphyseal fractures, white rim of epiphysis, so called Wimberg's sign. See, if you look at the records, if you recall records, the cortex is not defined. The sponges are born of the trabeculae, whereas here, the cortex is as if the white pencil line is drawn and the sponges are loosened. This is typical of a Wimberger sign. Epiphysiolysis, slipping of the epiphysis, broadening of osteochondral junction, cupping of metaphysis, superiastal infractions or corner sign. Classical features that you find, namely osteoporosis, Pelkin sign, Wimberger sign, superiastal hematoma and proximal sclerotic zone and still proximal to it you find what? Lucent zone. So actually the sclerotic zone is distal and proximal is the lucent zone, crumbling zone. 52 year old woman with progressive kyphosis. Look at the kyphosis deformity and also if you look into the vertebrae they are partially collapsed, wedge shaped and the cortex is white and the sponges is lucent. That is the differentiation between the cortex and sponges are indicating osteoporosis. In this particular woman, a combination both postmenopausal and she is also senile. A progressive systemic skeletal disease, that is what is called osteoporosis, characterized by low bone mass. The mass is low and micro architectural deterioration of bone facility and susceptibility to fractures. There is a WHO grading for this. One is normal, osteopenia, osteoporosis and severe osteoporosis depending upon the degree of lucency of the bones. Generalized diminished bone density is also called osteopenia. Whereas osteoporosis is inadequate osteoid synthesis specific. There may be calcium deficiency that doesn't become osteoporosis, there is osteomalacia again. So osteoporosis is specific, inadequate osteoid synthesis. Where does it occur? In senile people, dietary deficiency, endocrine abnormalities, disuse atrophy, localized osteopenia or stress deficiency, hypoxia, idiopathic, hydrogenic and congenital. Hydrogenic, namely steroids and other drugs may produce osteoporosis. In general, skeleton is, has got a cortex, 80% of the bone mass is in the cortex and 20% only of the turnover of bone. Whereas trabeculae, 20% of the bone mass, 80% of the turnover, that's why all metabolic bone disorders reflect upon trabecular bone. Osteoporosis, radiologically, we have defined already, marked lucency of bones, thin white cortical lines, trabecular resorption. So much so, sometimes you see a phantom appearance, as if there is no bone. Postmenopausal osteoporosis, if I again to repeat, osteopenia, trabecular bone resorption, cortical thickening, sclerotic line, deformities in the peripheral bones. Endocrine induced osteoporosis, Cushing, corticosteroids, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, pseudo hypoparathyroidism, pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism, hypogonadism, both ovaries or testes, hyperpituitarism hypopituitism and we repeat hypogonadism. Osteoporosis investigations, what are the investigations today? Of course, incidentally we find on radiographs, but densitometry you find early detection of osteoporosis. To continue endocrine induced osteoporosis, Cushing's with uh, administration of corticosteroids, hyperparathyroidism, Hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, pseudo hypoparathyroidism, pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism, hypogonadism, hyperpituitism, acromegaly ultimately leads to osteoporosis also, and then hypogonadism again, both in males and females. What are the investigations that you do? Plain films until uh, progressive osteoporosis takes place, plain films you cannot really diagnose early on. To identify patients at risk, and to assess prognosis after treatment, X-ray or dual energy X-ray absorptiometry is ideal. But then, today bone densitometry is popular, the so-called DEXA scan and ultrasonography. 
a 14 year old boy with renal colic and these are the films of the both knees as you see there are cystic type lucencies in the metaphyseal areas of the femora and tibia and dense epiphysis and if you look closely there is a bone in bone also in the epiphysis what will be the diagnosis primary hyperoxaluria or oxalosis rare inborn error of metabolism disease seen in childhood autosomal recessive excessive amounts of oxalic acid combines with calcium and deposited as calcium oxalate throughout the body throughout the skeleton oxalate in the urine can form stones leading to renal failure and also secondary hyperparathyroidism oxalosis what are the radiological findings coarse rarefaction of metaphysis as i said lucent areas lucent changes in metaphysis also sclerotic metaphyseal bands and epiphyseal densities in the abdomen you see nephrocalcinosis dense metaphyseal bands also in the spine and posterior ends of the ribs all these are due to secondary hyperparathyroidism this case a 10 year old girl with painful hands and ectopia lentis that should give you a clue clinically that there is ectopia lentis so there it must be there marfan syndrome or homocystinuria but this when you see this wrist you see more small spicules of bone in the physis particularly in the ulna also mild metaphyseal cupping is noted sclerotic bands are noted and if you look at the corpus the cavity is bigger and this should give rise to the diagnosis of homocystinuria deficiency of cystathione synthetase that is the enzyme deficiency and resulting in osteoporosis enlarged ossification centers as i told you the capitate enlarged corpus particularly the capitate metaphyseal spicules and vascular calcifications also are noted and then in the eye ectopia lentis downward and medial side deviation bufthalmus staphyloma and retinal detachment with optic atrophy this often should be differentiated from marfan syndrome radiologically skeletal changes again osteoporosis kyphoscoliosis concave vertebral end plates posterior scalloping of vertebrae microcephaly large sinuses thick calvarium and sternal deformity namely pectus carinatum and again in the spine you see compression of the vertebral bodies central wedging with osteoporosis note the differential between the cortex and spongiosa and fish mouth vertebrae in this case a 50 year old man with chronic back ache what do you notice mild wedging of the vertebral bodies marked osteoporosis sclerosis of the vertebral end plates and most important of all degenerative changes in the disc with calcification that should give a clue to the diagnosis of ochronosis or acaptonuria homogeneous acid accumulation deficiency of homogeneous oxidase radiologically all you find is osteoporosis not uh, related to the postmenopausal or senile osteoporosis but uh, younger age osteoporosis and chondrocalcinosis next entity is gaucher's disease it's rather uncommon but still we see once in a while case of gaucher's disease this is deficiency of beta glucosidase clinically three genetic forms are noted radiologically mixed lytic and sclerotic lesions modeling deformities erlenmeyer flask type of uh, femora pathological fractures infarcts ischemic necrosis reactive knee bone and periosteal reaction scalloping of the endosteum and splitting of the cortex look at the on your left radiograph of the hip osteonecrosis and also marrow changes in the neck and proximal part of the femur and on the right lack of modeling with infiltration of gaucher cells producing multiple permeative lucencies this is a 5 year old child with large head and swollen wrist if you look into the radiograph all you see is marked widening widening of the tubular bones with sclerosis and thickened trabeculae and this is the case of familial 
hyperphosphatasia. Radiological changes, what are they? Wide and dense cortex, thin primitive trabeculae, modeling deformities, cysts and metaphyses, thick skull. That's why the patient comes uh, presents with a large head. Membrane portion mostly is affected and is also sometimes termed as juvenile patches because it resembles in density and widening of the bones with sclerosis resembles Paget disease. Here notice hyperphosphatasia, juvenile pagets. Look at the skull, so called thickening with cotton wool appearance and almost obliteration of the paranasal sinuses. And if you look at the forearm bones, again widening, thickened trabeculae and increased density. A three year old child comes and the parent says the child is not doing well. And look at the forearm bones and uh, wrist bones, particularly the forearm bones is are shorter, not only that metaphyseal cupping, it is not the usual smooth cupping that you get in uh, rickets, but it is this loosens extension to the metaphysis also. And then in the hand bones, the metacarpals and phalanges also show some sort of a cupping and irregularity.